Hello, hello, hello. It's Private Talk Podcast with Alexis Texas, and we are back with another episode of Private Talk After Dark. And today we have the pleasure of having adult superstar, Mr. Marcus. <laughs> I feel like um, this interview has been long overdue. I feel right, like right, right, not right. only was the you know a, ti- a timing a conflict, actually location conflict, yeah, you know, yeah, so it needed to yeah, happen. Sometimes yeah, yeah. you know came by, but I feel like um, it's been a long time since I've seen you. You know, a lot of things have happened in the world. A lot of things have happened in the business. Yeah, now there's OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. There's different right. kinds of you know ways of living and. What have you been up to since, you know, the whole chaos of the energy. world changing? Right. You know, you were in the business for a really long, I mean, how many years now was? I, like 20, almost 20. Okay, I was going to say 18 for sure, yeah. but I was like, I, you know, I don't ever like to date people, right, you know, right, as far right, as right, what right. our ages are. Every time I'm like, cut a decade ago. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. I'm old. So being in the industry for, you know, that many years and having, the, you know, the evolution of like where everything from VHS and now, you know, the DVD, then it was Blu-ray and like mm-hmm. now the world stopped. And then now there's platforms like OnlyFans. How do you feel about platforms like that? Was it easy to kind of maneuver your way in because you just knew the business or did yeah. you, you feel kind of cheated? No, nah, I, I always, I like that. I thought, I tell everybody, it, it monetize the relationship between the performer and the fan. Yeah. It, it you know, it, it put money in that, in that space. It took the, and then, you know, it took the power away from the, the, uh, the brands like the, the marquee companies. Like the ba- powerhouse companies. Yeah. That are, yeah. And it put the power in the hands of the performer. So but now, weren't you also a director at one point too? Mm-hmm. So how does I mean, being on that standpoint, isn't it harder to you know, get people to work for you now because of those things? I mean, you know, the trade-off was content. Yeah. Um, you know, trades. People would want to shoot and share the content, mm-hmm. and you know, and we were kind of doing that before OnlyFans came around. Yeah. You know what I mean? And but I think that gave people an opportunity to make money and share content, create content and share it and monetize it and and generate revenue for it. So I don't think I was hampered. What I saw was social media kind of open up the door for a lot of a lot of creative people to get in. Yeah. You know, and and really show what they can do, you know. Do you feel like because like I know myself sometimes like times and things evolve. So we're talking about social media now and all these other things like do you find yourself kind of being maybe left behind or like being like okay, but what is TikTok? Like how do I fit in that network because right, you right. have such a big reach, you know, but it's like sometimes it's like how do we how do we get into it? Because myself, right. it's like at first when TikTok came around, that's like one of the biggest platforms that, you know, has a much reach right now. It's like, but I'm not used to making videos and dancings right. and right. I used to work my right. ass, but I'm not like I can't, you know, but it's also right. so many different elements to just that, too. And I think like, you know, um, things like OnlyFans kind of brought that open to the creator side of like you could really do anything creative if you like have people yeah. a buzz about you that you're like you know infectious yeah. like okay well what is he doing now or well, is he eating something that people like you know people right. are from like mukbang videos to right. I, I had somebody came up to me you know and said you do social media really well and i think I've, I've maintained a presence because you know i was around when it when it first like the internet was was like around 97 98 my website is dated that old you know what i mean so I, I, I was already, still, I don't think I was in high school yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I started high school, I graduated in 2003, you know, so just, you know, just put throwing that out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll be 52 in, in September, so. You look good. Uh, yeah, thanks, you know. It's, it's all like fine time. wine, you get better with time, you I'm know, trying. that's what I like to say. Trying. I'm working <laughs> on it. Um, it. You know, you gotta, it's peace of mind. It's just knowing things. You see people, younger people. And what they struggle with, and you're like, wow, I, t- I, I remember struggling with those things. Yeah. And then you realize how, how to get past those things. So for me, that's where I'm at. Like people, you know, it's like ants, you know, you, you break the line and you're like freaking out. And you're like, come this way, come this way. And so when I come across younger cats trying to do things, I just try to offer guidance. You know what I mean? Do it's they like, accept it? Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I get a lot of people coming up to me. I mean, because I feel like people ask sometimes, but then they also like then they like give their own advice to themselves. But they're like just want a sounding board to say something. Especially right. like sometimes. Well, when I was, I haven't shot in five or six years, but back when I was around the younger ones, they're like, oh, but they knew it all. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not gonna tell you anything then. Right, like, right, right. You know it all, and then find me whenever you yeah, want to yeah. talk to about. You know, yeah, so it's yeah. like. A, but for like the male performer aspect, it's like I, I don't know the dis- you know connect. It's like do they really do listen to your what you're saying, or do they come I in with a kind of ego mentality because you're kind of trying to fit in the game too, you know? 
some some cats are ego driven, and you, obviously you know like this industry ego heavy. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so when I see that, I, I I can recognize it and identify, it, and I just say that just that just comes with young age yeah. and and see and being fearless. Um, and but I've had enough things happen in my life in my career that people can can see that have you know my peaks and my valleys. Uh, and so when I'm telling them shit, it's usually because it's been hard earned uh, yeah. uh, experiences. You know what I mean? So yeah. I'm not trying to steer you wrong. I'm just trying to steer you strong. <laughs> For sure. I mean, I think that it's important. I think, uh, you know, earlier on in my career, and I've talked about it before, it's like I've definitely become more vulnerable in my last couple of years just with life and just learning things myself and working right. on myself of things. Right, it's like right. in the beg- in the beginning for me, it was like, no one helped me, so why should I help somebody else? And they're going to come at me a different way, like, oh, well, right. you just know it every well, and you know it all. And I'm like, I don't, but I wanted to share. And then it just, the information wasn't relayed that, so I'm just like, I'll keep it all to myself. Like, you know, it's not... Well, so now I feel like that doesn't get you anywhere because, right. you know, with anything and to excel and to, you know, elevate yourself, you need people, you need a team, you need people, you know what I mean? All those things and the components to make it more, mm-hmm. to make, you know, your career, the longevity of it, how it runs, you know, and just to be present in our industry, you know, especially in our industry, it's so small. People talk, people know your business, people right. know the good, the bad, the ugly, right. the divorces, you know, you know, you've known my ex-husband, I've met your, you know, I don't know if you're still married, but you know, I, right. we hung out, yeah, I remember but you know, outside came out, yeah, came out. the industry, you know what I mean? So things right. like that. So it's like a close family where it's like, where do you draw the line from like telling you? I mean, um, I, I, well, to go back to what you're saying, how do you, how do you reach people? I think I, I like this. I've been using this word a lot. Is it's in the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people. Don't, if you don't have the conversation, how do you get the understanding? And sometimes the conversation can be a little rough in the beginning because you're trying to, you know, stand your ground, state your opinion. You know, you, you uh, filter what you hear and mm-hmm. and and how you listen. But over the course of the conversation, understanding starts to happen. And the more people involved in that conversation, the more enlightening it can be. For sure. And so podcasts have been have opened that up social media tiktok platforms like youtube you know it's even in the even in the comments there's conversation even in the commentary do you engage yeah i mean i've always engaged i've never but do you engage in the positive and negative comments or do you only the negatives i kind of skip over i don't get into politics Mm -hmm. i don't get anything that uh people have a really strong opinion about yeah you know like i just kind of like you're switzerland well, you know, I, I, I don't think it's, I don't, I don't think they solve things. Okay. I think they just kind of inflame it mm-hmm. and you kind of miss the point. Okay. You kind of miss the point of what, you know, the purpose of you even seeing what you saw was about. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You kind of like, you get into this argument with someone and it just totally distorts shit. And so that I don't do. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. It's engaging Too for sure. to do that. <laughs> So you've had, we're going to have to talk about, you know, you've had the highs, the lows and everything. You had a big scandal come out in the industry with about mm-hmm. faking a test and even this whole syphilis thing. Mm-hmm. What has the repercussions and what have you learned from those outcomes and it being so heavily in the media? And like you said, you were, you were one of the most recognizable porn stars right. in, you know, besides, right. you know, Ron Jeremy and Jenna Jameson, you know, you're definitely up there. Right. How did that kind of like pressure feel to really kind of like, A, admit it? and put it out there and kind of like basically tell your truth. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think I didn't know I was on that level. I didn't re- realize how big a thing it was going to be. I mean, it just, you know, because in our industry, a lot of things like that happen when STDs and people trying to keep their medical, you know, history private or personal, you know, you, what do you share and what do you do? What, and what do you don't share? You know, because even though I was handling things on a personal level, on a professional level, it just we there was there were protocols and things in place that just weren't uh, acted on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I, what I learned, you know, now you know now the testing is a full panel. But but before when I started, and I tell people this all the time, it's like when I started, we were doing HIV tests, and they were every three months. Mm-hmm. So you had three months to go out there and just wreck havoc and fuck who you want, and then you weren't even yeah. doing STDs. So everything's been an evolution. Everything's evolved. Everything's gotten better as we've gotten better knowledge, better testing, a better uh, 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 sharing system. 
yeah all those things have come over time but at that time no none but of don't you think as far as like i mean we say we're like you know i make the joke like we're sexual athletes that's our job you know mm -hmm. it's it's our responsibility in our personal life and on set to make that kind of a safe space because right. we're all fucking each other and we like to fuck but it needs to be like a respect thing so right. i feel like for me the biggest thing was everyone's human everyone makes mistakes we get into you know certain situations if it's money if it's morals if it's whatever the case be going at the time you know what i mean it's like who knows who would make those decisions but it's like at the end of the day for me it's how you show up and you're accountable for it and how you what you move from there mm -hmm. you know what i mean and how you move forward and if it's if you advocate for more information more testing more of this whatever you know and, and, and taking the accountability that route of not just being like oh well we, we didn't test and it wasn't you know whatever because we are we still accountable from even when we yeah. fuck our sexual partners you know in their personal life well, bringing I, it home from being an adult entertainer yeah i mean and obviously i was like I was under this spotlight and under for still. I mean, I still, I still, people still discuss things with me yeah. passionately. So, do you get into arguments or are they willing to hear your side of the story? No, I don't. I listen. And not an argument from you, Marseille, but maybe people got offended if it would hit them internally, outside, or just because business related. I think, I think you know, there's a lot of things that could have been said by other people mm -hmm. that could have helped alleviate and and help with the understanding. Such what as. Happening. Uh, I think, you know, as far as the testing mm -hmm. place, who was very, like, aware of what was going on before it became a big deal. Yeah. And, you know, they kind of, like, they were discussing my situation with other people before. Like, that's illegal, isn't yeah, it? I mean, yeah. I was just kind of, like, I even contacted the owner. I mean, I was reaching out and talking with people and getting looking for clarification uh, and trying to understand, it, you know, and... As far as the medical aspect, like, what do yeah, you do and, like, how do we yeah. move forward? Because I was trying to tell them personally, yeah, I've already been through this with yeah. my doctors, treated. What else can I do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've done everything. And then the industry had a whole set of different protocols because they weren't even testing mm -hmm. for that. They were doing it twice a year and, and TTDS that just happened. It was, so like, a I, certain month that had, yeah, it was, just like, a yeah. a certain month. I just tested and everything was fine. Yeah. So it, it, it was... It, it was a lot of it was could have been handled a lot differently on a lot of fronts and it just wasn't and so what what i had to do was you know take the brunt of it and just really kind of like you know tell that tell my side of the story but it's kind of hard because you know so what of, is your full side of the story full side of the story is you know we catch stds in our industry whoever gave it to me never came up and said hey I caught something I needed to, you know, I need to let you know, even with, even with our protocols with gonorrhea, chlamydia, you know, you take a, you take a, a seven day to 10 day. But it's hard to see if you're working all the time, like who works with who and who right. got it from who to really track that. But I get that. I, you know, we can do it. I mean, you know, somebody know they had it somebody know they gave it. So, uh, you know, I tried my best to, once I was treated, I, I took the time off and I didn't work and, you know, and then when I try to go back to work, the tests, you know, you get, if, and you know, the funny thing is when you test for syphilis, you have uh, non-reactive and reactive, and they're testing for your antibodies. So what, so what I, what I was up against was the test that they gave me was coming up as positive, but it was a, it was a false positive because that was nothing but the antibodies. Antibodies. But if they know that ahead of time, which they knew, they would, they administer a different test. And remember back in the days, they used to give you this, for chlamydia and gonorrhea, once you were treated, they'd have, hey, he had it, but he's been treated. Mm -hmm. I didn't get that. Yeah. And so that's where, you know, I took matters in my own hand and that's where it got all fucked up. Yeah. And I get it. I, and I, I understand where the backlash came and, you know, I, I expected somebody to come up and kind of bat for me, but it never happened. Yeah. And so going forward, it was like, what can I do? You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I reached out to everybody I worked with, you know, um, I even took myself out of the, out of the, out of the, out of the working environment because there was people made these threats against performers. Like if you work with him, we're going to blackball you. Mm. And so I, are you blackballed from the industry? Nah, nah, yeah. this girls, you know, it's a whole different industry now. Yeah. It's just like, you can go, you can 
perform and do whatever you want. Yeah. OnlyFans has opened that up. Content trade. So you just not up. work for companies like big companies. I just haven't shot. Okay. I, there was. Uh, Is that something that you would be willing to want to do again, or you'd feel more comfortable just keeping it the way that? Nah, I, you know when I started in the business, I started. I went immediately into directing. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I'm a writer. I like to write. I like to. I'm a reader. I'm a reader first, and then I love to write. So I read everything. And I'm, a, and I'm absorbed with that. And then I write all these thoughts because I've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. I hear all these opinions and ideas and and I have my own, yeah. you know, but I'm much better when I'm just writing it out. Yeah. And so for me, I was writing scripts. I was writing synopsis. And then I picked up equipment and started filming things. You know, I, I go around and I do, you know, my social media is a lot of filming, a lot of photos. It's, mm. you know, uh, it's and you're positive. doing it all yourself. I do it all myself. Yeah, I do everything myself. But I've always been that guy. Yeah, you know, sex. I didn't get into the industry for the for the money. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the sex, you know, uh, and I still enjoy the sex, uh, you know, and I but the dynamics for had changed in a way where it was like I didn't want to put people through scrutiny. Yeah, because the industry, you know, people fans can I just saw a lot of that. Would you just, say that you lost friends because of it? Yeah, I, I, you know, I yeah. Had, yeah, I had people like literally uh, who said I can't be your friend anymore. Yeah, you know, and it was just kind of like I, you know. It was For like, me, I mean, me like I said before, being a friend as well, it definitely was a gray area of like I don't condone what you did. I didn't like 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 it or appreciate it because if I could have been you know in the same industry affected by it, if you know, God forbid, something would have happened, those things, mm -hmm. but years later evolving of things like that again like i you know i'm not anybody to judge anybody and everybody is human and we make mistakes right. and again as long as you again have ownership which you have you did the right thing that you thought you had to do as far as the people you connected what you know and told and whatever and at that point there's really not much more you can do other than get on to the other side of it you know it's unfortunate there's yeah. there were so many you no know, different rumors I feel like that once it's out there you don't really know the truth and that's why for here it's like I wanted to have a like we call private talk with Alexis Texas is because it's an intimate more conversation where you get to say your truth you say your things it's like because there was things about saying that you did jail time for it that you did you know that he was fines for it for all these right. other things but it's like a lot of things are false and you know out in the right. media you don't know what is true and what's well, not yeah and that was the other thing like when I would try to talk people would headline it Mr. Marcus admits it is. Mr. Marcus says yeah. that, and I was like, "It's not what happened." But you know, for people to grab the the attention, to grab the, the clicks, the yeah. debate, it was I, I. You know, this is 2012, mm -hmm. ten years ago, and you know, it's not now. Look at social media. I mean, clickbait is all over the Everywhere, place. Everywhere, yeah. False, you know, I wasn't mad at Trump when he was saying false news and shit. Because I knew that, yeah, there's a shitload of it out there. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, but I'm not that guy. I'm not. You can, I'm the same guy. My number never changed. Yeah. If you had a problem with me, you can call me. If you want to see tests, I kept all of my tests. For sure. From, you know, from my early performing days in, in 96, 97. To, to 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 all the way up until all that shit happened. Yeah. I had everything. But I was, even like, also like, so going the fact of like, how just on the... The ignorance of what to do after that happens because it's not something that happens all the time. Yeah, like you know what I mean? It and then it's like, what do? Yeah. Like what would you? You well, know see, what I mean? And like then it became like a teaching moment because. There and was, that's the, my my right. furthermore. It's like now for you, it's like the advocacy of like, okay, well, you should. And my biggest thing is like, it's so ironic and even personal lives to like sexual things and like mo in the industry is a little different because we have more of a voice of like a no list or this whatever, but sex is such taboo type situations but we right. want it what well, we're fucking people and it's the most intimate thing but right. we can't say hey i have something wrong with me or hey i can't do this or hey because it's embarrassing it's right. this it was, whatever yeah, but it's yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's lack of, co of, of conversations right. because it's the hard questions people don't want to know but it's like but you're willing to like have somebody's bodily fluid inside of you touch you spit on you do whatever but you don't want to tell them oh wait what's what's that or this you know what i mean like yeah. so for me is why it's about the education it's about bringing light to things and yeah sometimes things have to get dark before we get to the light to see the other things and like really bring right. awareness of right. why now testing is a little bit more evasive you know as it should have been we you know we were working with multiple partners back then we were shooting way more nowadays i mean then than now like i would work every single day right, you know what i mean right, you're right, shooting right. seven days a week right. you're doing multiple 
multiple partners what are, seem sometimes you don't. The fuck out of you. you well, know of what course. I mean? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's business. Just, business, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, you know, who, who's next? You know, who's coming? Th- you know, un, un, and they're not teaching you, uh, you know, ownership. They're not teaching you business. They're not, you know, there's a lot of business savvy people now, but that came over time with the money. It came with the interaction with the fans. It came with the, the brand building, the management. I mean, all of these things that people, you know, the content creation, it, it came because the money was there. You know for what sure. I mean? And you tapped into it and those people willing to pay for it. So you have to educate yourself. You know what I mean? And so I just said, you know, fucking people don't think whatever the hell they're going to think. And, I, you, and, I, and you have to, like, what people say about you, you have to say, is that who I am? Yeah. Or do I know who I am? Or yeah. do I define that? Yeah. And I said, fuck that. I define it. You know what I mean? I know I'm, I'm a good dude. I know I take care of a lot of motherfuckers. I've looked out for cats. Mm-hmm. I don't go around bad-mouthing cats. Yeah. I'm, you know, I try to enlighten and open doors. And I, and I do that to a complete stranger as, yeah. as well as people that are like blood. Mm-hmm. So that's who I am. And for that's, sure. And that's who I'm going to be. I think that to me is why it was such a struggle to, obviously it was out there to believe it, but then because I knew who you were as a dad, you know, a husband, as somebody, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was just, the, it didn't make sense, but everybody makes mistakes and, you know, you yeah, just have to move you know, on And when it. you're in this business, when you're like, you know, the guy, and which I didn't realize, you know, they target you, you know what I mean? You're, you're, you're seen differently, you're treated differently. Well, but I think it's because it's just like, you know, in the whole mainstream media, like why, like the Kardashians are popular. People want to be a part of your life. If it's because they want to see the girls you're fucking, who talks to you, what celebrities you're around, they want to see it all. And again, why you were the most recognized, you wear that fucking hat everywhere you go. So not necessarily that one in particular, but you know what I'm saying? Ever since, you know, we used to do signings together. We, we We toured together and it was, intriguing to see because you don't really see the feedback from fans as crazy with a lot of male stars like you did yourself like uh, really other than you i think you were i toured with you first before i was around ron jeremy but it was that like that star power that like we're like gawking at you like women you know what i mean like the whole chippendales things where it's like it's crazy yeah yeah people say you know how come you don't perform i mean i i did almost three thousand movies and so you, you know, be fucking, Marcus. No. Yeah, I'd be fucking. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was like, I, I feel like I didn't need that. You know, if I would have continued on and, I, you know, the dynamics of my family were different. I was much more, vis- uh, you know, highly visible. I mean, I go, I, I like to be able to go places. And, yeah. You know, even now I'm uncomfortable when cats are like, I'm in Costco and cats are like, hey, hey I know you. You know, people know me. Yeah. I'm, like, I... I'm on camera. I'm off camera. I'm, yeah. This is my city. Yeah. You know what I mean? They, I can go, you know, I, I, I take the bus sometimes, the subway. Yeah. I ride my bike all over the place. I'm, you know, I'm chilling. I don't, yeah. I don't like, you don't have to go. Yeah. You can just say what's up. And but we, I think that that's what attracts it more. Mm. You know what I mean? When, when you don't, when you don't need it or expect it, you're not looking for it. It just happened. Really. Like, you know, like you said from the beginning, you got into the business not because of the money. You liked fucking. You you know obviously you've been fucking. It's twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> you know you had you know, to be doing something right. You know what I mean. So it's like it's like what you take of it. Obviously we're not supposed to be the same when we first started in the industry to where we are now. You know it's we're supposed to evolve. We're supposed to have learn lessons. We're supposed to have right. families, a life. Like porn right. doesn't define us. It's just a yeah, part of yeah, who we are. Exactly. But I think that that's what people really kind of forget that we are people. We have feelings, we have emotions, we go through uh, lows, highs, we go through, you know, all kinds of things where people forget, like, I'm not just a hole or, in your part, a dick. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Now, you know, and, and on the flip <clears throat> side, there's such, you know, I remember people talking about mental health, mm-hmm. you know, and you don't understand the dynamics of, like, the people coming at you sexually all the time and expecting things and because they feel like they know you because they watch the movie. Mm-hmm. It's just a movie, you know yeah. what I mean? And so the, the, they proposition you know, I get proposition all the damn time. How does that make you feel? I kind of just, I'm, I'm polite. I used to just be like, no thanks. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just but does it make you feel like like a piece of meat? Like object, nah, like an object? Nah, because I know, I know better than that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't feel like that. Because some women are, I mean, most women, I mean, nowadays especially are more aggressive than men. Oh, yeah. Like, I mean, I just went to an industry oh, yeah. party for the first time, like, in three years that I was talking to someone I hadn't seen in a long time, and all these young girls are just grabbing his dick to get his attention, and I'm like, okay, I don't know. like, that, for me, I wouldn't want someone trying to be fingering me the whole time when someone's trying, you know, it's the same equivalent, right. why is that, you know, right. it's that teetering line, but it's just like, why do you, that why? to me, I don't like the object, I'll fuck all day, we look together, cool, down, 
but I just don't like the whole feeling like an object because you'd think that like yeah. I'm a Lexus Texas so oh let me touch your ass like right, I'll right. let you maybe if you ask nicely you know what I mean it just depends on what the situation right. is I you know it's you know when you've been around a while you kind of learn how to navigate like I can I can turn the fire up I yeah can turn the fire down or I can just turn it off completely well you're an alpha male and I feel like you like you're very you observe you kind of like and then you kind of attack accordingly of what's you know what mm. it is and plus you've been around this industry for a very long time right. so right. you know who's really gonna cross the line who's full of shit and like what's yeah. you know really I that handle, scenario I can handle like you know you have yeah because I, I, I have to handle like either a really strong gay personality or even a trans personality yeah. or a very butch personality or or very bisexual or very you know straight. You know, you're dealing with, you, you, and then you're a, or a confused yeah. person, or even a virgin, or an extreme sexual person, and those those things jump out. Yeah. You know, some of those things, that's what they lead with. Especially because <laughs> they feel comfortable because you're just a sexual person, right? And they just want to tell right. you all of their, hey, blah, 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 and right, you're like, whoa, right, right. Uh, let's, you know, let me take just, a sip real quick. I just sit there <laughs> like, it's cool, cool. What would you say would be your craziest fan interaction? Man. They just, man, there's a whole bunch of those. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you just, I mean, with that whole lead up, it's like, you know, it could go either way. It could be, you I know. Mean, was I, had, I had a girl, when I when I met her, she came at me about something, one thing, on the internet. So I was like, I was receptive to it because it was actually where my mindset was at the time. So I reached out to her and we ended up meeting up. And when I met up with her, she was like, here, she hands me a credit card with my name on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> she's like. You know, this is for, you know, in case you need to go buy things and do things. And Did you just, use the credit card? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the biggest purchase on the credit card? I, I mean, I took it. I, I flew a couple places. So <laughs> okay, okay. So she was just your sugar mama. Kind of, yeah. But what yeah, did yeah. you have to do in return for this well, card? That was, and that's where, you know, <laughs> she, yeah, she, wanted, she wanted all these things that I would not. I like just, what? Like fucking, or she, was it like I romantic, so. like she like relationship she things? She never said it. She never said it. But I can, I can feel that it was like, hey, you know. I mean, if you want to, you know, if you want right. to give it if to you me, want to, then go but for like, it. you know, she she made me feel bad because she was like, I'm sorry, I'm not, you're not attracted to me or something, and I was just like, yeah, because she probably was like, man, how many times are you gonna use my credit card and not hit it? <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what is the rejection? <laughs> Women don't like to be rejected. Have you ever ghosted a woman? Yeah, of course. Why Why do you ghost people? Was it because of sexual one night stand? Or was it like somebody that you were engaging with more than like multiple times and they like then you just disappeared like a ghost? Because uh, for you, it's hard to ghost too because you're so known. And right. this is your city, like you said. They right. find you on the bus route. They'll find you on your bike. They'll think it. Yeah, you know what <laughs> I mean? On set I'm being just, like, right. what's going on? <laughs> right, right. I mean, I'm, I, I am reachable, and, I, and, it, and I've been accessible for my whole career. So let's know? change it. Why do you think men ghost women? Why do men? I think because usually they got somebody on the side, or okay. they, got, they got a main chick, so they can't, they can't. They can't that navigate. Girl, yeah, they can't, you know, if she starts to want to, if she wants to uh, uh, move in on that position. Okay. Sometimes the guy has to make a decision, like, is he going to let, a, you know, open that it's that like chess, button. okay? I got right. <laughs> or is he going, you know, nah, you got you to gotta protect the queen or are you going to open her up and make it vulnerable? Okay. So that's a decision that has to be made. You know? All right. So So that would be the only reason why you think in a nah, ghosting I mean, situation? And, and if you come across somebody who's destructive, I don't like destructive Toxic. People. Yeah, I don't like anybody who wants to destroy, you know, the peace. Okay. <laughs> You need peace within. So do you have like a roster where it's like you keep the peace within so you know? Because like at this time, do you like, you know, you just know what you like. Sometimes it's a lot of work. Like me, I'm single. Dating is a lot of work. People think that I'm probably fucking everybody. It's not really like that, you know? Nah, but nah, when it's like, nah. you know, nah, when you find your people, sometimes you, you know? If you, you know, I, 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 if, it's, if everything is cool, if we got cool chemistry and the, and the situation is cool, so you're open to it, but there's no one on your roster right now. Mm, mm, mm. Your content partners? <laughs> what do we want to call them? <laughs> <It's so funny. laughs> you come, you come across cats who, who like, mm, you know, mm -hmm. you they, they intriguing. Yeah, they turn the fire on. All they right, turn it up. Describe something really exciting in your life right now. Uh, 
I, it's funny because I, I, when I, I turned 50 and I was like, cool, I could nice. chill. I was chill. And I, and I liked that. I just wanted to just coast. But life is dynamic, mm -hmm. you know. So there's some projects that I'm working on writing. Okay. Um, you know, I've just like had mainstream wise mm -hmm. in the industry wise, like in as far as mainstream. adult mainstream. Okay. There's a there's a project that we want to do in the industry, like as a, for me, I want to do it as a as a signature piece. Okay. Something artistically and sexually uh, focused. Okay. You know that we've kind of wrote the concept for and the ideas for. The funding. Like an erotic novel ish type thing. Yeah, it's got strong sexual themes. Okay. Which work perfectly. It's not explicit. It's not hardcore like that. And it's not the bullshit. It's not like a, some shit that everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. It's really outside the box. So, nice. Now, mm -hmm. is this something about working on yourself, or you have a team of people that you're working on this? Um, it started off as a, just a singular thing, but now I've got yeah. some pretty strong people behind it. Very cool. Know? That's exciting. Yeah. If you could instantly attain three skills, what would they be? If I could retain? Attain, like right now. Attain. If you could have any, you could get, re, I can give you, Miss Texas could give you three wishes right now, and you could get any three skills you want, what would they be? Uh, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, you know, you, somebody, who, it was a, I saw a movie where a guy had the power to, to take. Like, uh, it's like you could teleport. Like be witch, like you could be anywhere you want. Wiggle your nose and go somewhere. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Be in three places at once, probably. I, okay, I like so you want to multiply the situation, not just yeah. being go there quick to like, hey, yeah. I need to go to West Hollywood. Let me go there I mean, now. Especially in L.A. Yes. <laughs> especially in L.A. Okay, that's a good I skill to just have. Be gone. Uh, flying. Okay. There's many times I look out. I just want to like. Have you ever done skydiving? Mm -hmm. You liked it. I loved it. Okay. Love Bird it. in the sky, got it. All right, third yeah. one. Uh, I want to play an instrument. Have you tried, attempted? I have a keyboard at the house. I've had a few lessons. Okay. Um, Do you like it? Or are you? I love it. Okay. I love it. I'm not great. I'm not good. I want to just be in, around music. I, let me add one more. DJ. Okay. I want to. I want to learn how to DJ. So you like the music stuff? I love music. Okay. That's probably what keeps you young. Your heart, you know. For sure, it definitely um, mm -hmm. it's a feel good for all levels. Yeah, you know, we, what I mean, we like when you listen some stuff, you know, you like it's like nostalgic almost. You're like, oh, I can remember when you know, this came out, or I remember yeah. when this person broke up with me to this song, or this thing, whatever. Yeah, yeah. There's a there's the, it, it it you know bad or good memories. Mm -hmm. uh, but even discovering new shit. Yeah. Love finding new artists. Yeah. New sounds, a new vocal, a new a new message. I love all that. Who would you say is your first celebrity crush? Strong, still to this day, is probably Janet. Janet? Janet Jackson, yeah. So you being so as recognizable as you are, what celebrities have come at you, either in your DM, um, parties, well, been know, like, hey, you know, I've seen your movie, Mr. Marcus. I know how you put it down. Yeah, well, <laughs> female, yeah, female. Was like, uh, Janet Jackson recognized me when I met her. She said, you know, oh, I know you. And that threw me off. I didn't expect that. Yeah. You know, and so I was like kind of fumbling words after that. Uh, Tupac, Tupac reached out. I hung out with him for a while. Okay. My fellow Gemini. Yeah, yeah. Snoop, me and Snoop, we, we working on a project. So me and him have been super cool. Uh, uh, Claudia Jordan's a good friend of mine. It's Portia Coleman. Uh, I mean, I meet a lot of people, you know. But these are, I'm saying, as far as like yeah, who wanted up. to like, you know. Uh, nah. Did you uh, ever, did anybody like ad make a sexual advance and you're just like, I just can't? Mm, no. Are you always delivered? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is it? Please. <laughs> I can't remember her damn name because now she's married and kids and everything. And that was like the first, she was like, she used to host, it was a talk show. She was fine. Wendy Williams? The <laughs> yeah, I love Wendy. I love Wendy though. Wendy, Wendy's cool people. Uh, damn it. She was, I can't remember her name, but me and her, we hung out a few times and I thought there was a possibility. That it could be a thing, but it right, just right. fizzled out? No, no, no. We just kind of 
let it do. let it happen yeah, yeah, yeah. what is your biggest pet peeve like uh people who don't pick up shit they the see it dirty on the floor people. yeah they, they see it and they walk right over it it drives me crazy <laughs> what makes you smile everything a lot of things a lot even, of things? even bad shit uh not <laughs> not tragic shit though okay but just funny shit that happens to people and if i can see so if someone falls you're definitely laughing in front of you i i won't laugh <laughs> I, my first instinct is to see if they're okay and then laugh okay and then but i laugh usually with them i try to get them to see the humor in it okay got me all right i yeah. like that i like that <laughs> what luxury items do you treat yourself with is there something that you kind of splurge on? You know, you've worked really hard. You've done well for yourself. Is there something that you kind of like indulge in? I I'm, I like video games. I'm a gamer. Okay. Not a hardcore gamer where I got my own chair and fucking. You're not like on Twitch doing the whole controller. things. No, 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 no. That's a big thing. Maybe it's marketing could do. No, they actually sent me an email this morning and said, "Hey, we, we're see, look, we I'm about you. it manifesting. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. We talk about it. Things happen for a reason. You witness, right. you believe in it. Right. We achieve it." And the way they the way they phrase it they have got my interest like hey we we miss you we need you <laughs> we um, need you back <laughs> mr marcus come play with us <laughs> that part that part <laughs> do you have a social media weakness mm, I, I look at my feed and it's mainly girls cars and food but is there one that you kind of like do are you more of a twitter person more of an instagram i'm an instagram i'm an instagram Whore. An Instagram whore. So yeah. you're t like saying your whole day from start to finish. I, nah, if, I just it goes to it comes and goes. Some okay. days it's just retweet other people's shit or okay. repost other people's stuff, and then you know my, you know, I, I, I man, if I posted half the shit, <laughs> <laughs> they think you're crazy. Right. <laughs> They're like, what I, kind of humor is this? My, my shit will be banned, and you know, that's, I don't post anything hardcore on none of my feeds because got haters. Your target on your back already, just yeah, by your yeah, name, yeah. yeah. So I know the minute I post anything, they're gonna like, you know, I'm getting flagged. And, yeah. And so uh, I don't post anything hardcore. Uh, I post all that stuff on OnlyFans. You mm -hmm. know, that's that's where it all goes. But you could, you know, you could, and I can ruffle feathers and stir the pot a little bit. It's not worth it. <laughs> it's not worth it. What is advice that you would give your younger self? Uh. Uh, just learn business, you know, apply the business. Okay. Don't, you know, check your ego and focus on the business, you know. There's no, you know, people, when it gets personal and all that sort of crap, it fucks with your emotions, fucks with your vibe, your energy, it actually can actually, you know, impede your flow. Mm -hmm. But business, it applies, it's a universal thing, you know, it, it just... It provides if you you know in this industry is such a big industry it's huge and you're just giving it away you're mm -hmm. giving that piece of yourself away for pennies it's your entity yeah you know we get the notoriety we, yeah we, you know the fame and all that shit but the, the business no one's teaching you that no one's taking the time and people kept offering giving me big platforms hustler vivid playboy i mean i was fucking with the big dogs but I wasn't learning mm -hmm. how to apply that to my own so who would you say life. are some of your mentors that kind of got you to a space that you did start to learn them uh you know um James Alexander over at West Coast Productions mm -hmm. he was a huge influence Shawn Michaels because he carried himself as such a you know it, you know and he's still to this day he's mm -hmm. guy dresses in suits you yeah know, non-stop and he's just real you know and he's a he's a trailblazer he does what he wants to do in mm -hmm. the career he's, he's open he's so as far as an icon him um you know uh uh marcy Hurst, you know is a mm -hmm. good friend of mine's vivid just watching her manage you know handle vivid and the girls and the brand uh i learned a lot from her adam and eve uh, even you i've watched you you know go through a lot of different changes and really make a brand for yourself i yeah. would see you at Exotica, and you'd have this booth, and you had, and you, and you, and your brand was front and center. Mm -hmm. and you had the models, and you know that's. I know you know to bring those people, get them there, feed them, pay them, house them, 
you know, sure. make sure they're mentally, you know, stable and happy. It's hard to have to <laughs> Right. For <laughs> sure. So, you know. No all, respect. Right. And so, but you're also one of those pioneers because other women see you doing it and then they turn around and say, I can do it too. For sure. You know I mean? And that's kind of with me is I've always gravitated to people that are very kind of like that, have been pioneers in their own ways it's because it's like I'm about breaking barriers and like. I'm not, you know, the what the porn typical girl looked like back in the day. I didn't have big fake tits, you know. I have a curvy body, like right. I have these things. And it was really, no, nah, it was really important for me, and I was always comfortable in my skin that I was like really showing what like real women look like and being okay in your body. And if I, you know, have my ass is too fat, like it wasn't a thing. Like I always was like I was always the girl that ate a cheeseburger after set. You know, I didn't care about those things, but it was really for the message message of that you could do it too. Like, you know what I mean? If you really wanted to in the mindset of like doing that. And so it was important to give women an opportunity to kind of do their own brands as well within my brand. So I feel like it was important to kind of like break those things down to give the opportunities that are out there now. And now when you look at Exotica, like it's, I mean, I mean, I could pat myself on the back. I mean, of why things have changed and like kind of like the mold of what I did is everybody's doing it, you know, like that way, you know? So it's like, um, it's it's interesting to see it kind of fold out of how everything has kind of panned out. Well, you know, and women, you guys have a different um, energy, synergy with each other, you know? You just strengthen numbers, you know what I mean? Even, you know, you look at like Brazzers and Phoenix Marie and who I, you know, I love and she, you know, she's all about like, hey, come here, girl. You know, yeah. she's all about promoting and propping up other people, supporting. You know, we've lost a lot of people in this industry. A lot of people have either come and gone or yeah. suicide, drugs. Mm. So there's a darkness in the within the business. If people don't get that support, they don't yeah. get that mental check in mm-hmm. that you know, or that you know that that or shown you know that they're worth. Yeah, you know. I think it's one of those things too, where it goes back again all to like the communication, where it's like some of those people going through problems. You know, we didn't know those things or know what to, how to ask, or now you know it's more. We talk about it more that now you're like, oh, maybe I should check in on those things, or it's like not that you didn't have the intentions to do it, but sometimes you just don't know better. Right. You know, so it's like I, I enjoy now that there is more of a camaraderie in the business, where before I feel like it was very, very everybody was like out for themselves and like there's room for everybody to grow right. you know what i mean like there's right. enough money for all of us to make right. there's no you have a fat ass i have a fat ass doesn't fucking matter <laughs> like you know what i mean it's like it's 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 just uh everybody it's loves interesting fat ass. love that fat ass i know i do i, I hope private you know, talk to us because I, I, you know I, I, it's I, privately I, when they're here <laughs> i always like think what were you thinking god you you know that's like he said i need y'all to fuck i need y'all to reproduce and a fat ass is gonna Kryptonite. It's somebody's <laughs> kryptonite. So you said that you, you know, you've been in the business for a long time, but what would do you think you would be doing if you were not in the adult entertainment business? If you went like the whole mm, right. corporate route or right. went to school route or feel like whatever, what do you, what do you think or that you would have kind of done? I like, I like being on camera. Okay. I like the camera. I love taking pictures. I love being in front of it or behind it. Um, I would have somehow, I, I know I, I, I I would have been acting. Okay. You know, I like all of that. And my friends are all actors and comedians mm-hmm. and musicians. So I'm around these motherfuckers. And this is like, an, you know, it's like I want to act. I want to be, you know, but the porn kind of tainted that, you know. It, it, taint, it, it taints it in a way where if you get these straight-laced people who are like, you know, you know, hey, we want you for this part. Oh, you got this. Oh, shit. Name and following of yeah, they right. usually like oh you can play Mr. Marcus or yeah the, yeah yeah kind of I don't know if it's the, that way now I, I remember early on but even then people were given opportunities I mean you know I think I mean if you really love to do it you I feel like it's something you should revisit I think if anything it's a learning tool to you could put in your belt of whatever I start I did a I never thought I wanted to do acting stuff at all I had gotten approached by something that wasn't an Alexis Texas type thing. Um, it never kind of came to like fruition, but I got an acting coach and just the time that I spent with them was just learning different things for right. the craft of what you do and other stuff right. was cool to see how the breakdown was. Right. So it's like even maybe you do it and you love it or you hate right. it. But, you know, I feel like right. for what you're already doing for the production value and all the other things like that, I feel like it brings more of an asset to you yeah. than making it a hindrance because it's I mean, it's fun. It's not like it's not. Yeah, maybe you, 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 you're absolutely correct, because if I looked at it that way, it'd be. You know, everything 
there's opportunity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? No, you're not like. But it goes back to like the whole business thing is you've made such a name for yourself that regardless if that's Mr. Marcus gets you in the door for the opportunity, but you're still having, you know, things that you would like to do if it's acting behind mm -hmm. the camera, the mm -hmm. exposure of being like, because nowadays it's kind of changed where, yes, like porn was taboo, but a lot more people because it's new money fuck with us you know before it's like oh, hard yeah. to get branding it's hard to get sponsorships it's right. hard to whatever which it's still a little tainted which i'm trying to change that too but it's like you know it's again we're just people i'm not fucking on your movie you're, yeah. you're using my name and yeah. my and my following you yeah. know what i mean so i think it's a, well, a a scale that you should probably like you know see if it balances out no, for you. yeah you're absolutely correct and there's two things there's, there's new businesses there's new entities new brands that are like embracing adult stars mm -hmm. you know like looking for them there's cannabis companies that but those are also you gotta be careful though too is because again what we talked about is they want more from you than you if you right, don't know right, your right. worth well, so it's like the yeah. you know what so, what we bring to the table yeah. as business partners not partners I not um, I work not with my you, licensing not for yeah you, right yeah we can work together i can bring you know if i need to bring the legal if i need to bring a lawyer to the to the meeting then okay so do you have a cannabis thing kind of you're working on yeah i've been working with these cats uh roots and buds okay and i love them i love them they're family oriented <laughs> they they've been growing for over 12 to 15 years this okay. guy's been involved based in la yeah yeah okay. based in la um and you know the the, the smoke is good <laughs> Smoke is good. That's important. It's always <laughs> it's always good to uh, test your product. Make sure you have the good stuff out there and right. put your name behind something that you right. enjoy doing. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. You I know. like you know a, a good smoke. I like a good smoke. I don't I don't just smoke everybody's shit. I don't need to, I don't smoke every day. I yeah. don't wake up and 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 talk. But if I'm around good people and mm -hmm. they got something and they say you know hit vibe the, it out. Yeah. That's but, what I think. It's like it's a vibe. It's definitely like I'm yeah. a vibe at all times. So I definitely smoke more than the average person probably. Mm, yeah, I saw that. But uh, you know, I got a guy. Like, this guy, uh, uh, my boy, uh, uh, B, B is with Roots and Buds. This motherfucker. The first time I ever hung out with him, we were all like hanging out at the loft, <clears> and he just starts rolling joints. And I like joints. I don't, I'm not a big blunt guy. I'm mm -hmm. not, I don't want the tobacco. And so he's just rolling these joints, man. And I'm just, and I'm just talking to him. And next thing I know, I'm smoking it. And it, you know, and I'm sitting there smoking. We're chopping it up. And he's rolling up another one. And you know, I, I, I finished that. And next thing I know, I'm picking up another one. I'm like, dude, you're the only person. That the rotation. That's why he keeps rolling it up because you just keep on going. <laughs> but it, but it was something that he's doing to it, to the weed, to the joint, to the. So it's his technique, technique is it's what you technique. think that you because I think it, I don't think it's so much sometimes it's the weed but it's who you're smoking with and who you get it from too. True, but I think that if you're someone smoking like that, you're not getting shitty stuff. It's always going to be premium yeah. things, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then like and then again, it's the extra TLC. What you said, like being the I'm environment, saying. the good right. feeling of it. Yeah. It's like yeah. I can remember yeah. back when I first I was like there was this one we called eight one eight, and I was like I can remember the day I got high with all my friends. It was like the most funnest high I've ever had like the giggles and I would always like to the, my old guy where is that you get like replicate the what 818 and there's like a crossbreed now that hang out but it's not as great but do you get like a uh, horny do you get sexual like you know I don't I think I'm just overly sexual as person so I'm like horny all the time generally but weed for me was more of an anxiety that yeah. I had super like just anxiety in general a social anxiety sometimes whatever so smoking made me feel normal mm. and balanced me out because mm. um, most times like yeah am I high but I don't feel like fucked up high like I feel like it it makes me function well which I'm sure a lot of smokers think that you know right, what I mean right, right. but I don't do it for those purposes like you I don't do know edibles and stuff? I have yes especially because I've been working on my own cannabis stuff so I've been testing out something like certain things but it's not generally mainly to go to sleep um like because if I like to smoke my weed and my flower like that and control it that you way your own stuff or do you like um cool? I do cones yeah. I used to do blunts I was heavy only on blunts but then like probably like three years ago I switched to cones just because it was cleaner and I didn't like the tobacco as well yeah. um, but I've been on the whole um, Jeter's thing at the moment what is that? Um, it's a type of wham but they have like it's resin on it and so they oh, like right, dip right, it right. and yeah. it's flavors and yeah, I, it's yeah, all yeah. up my alley so I'm like I love yes, those I love yes, those with yes, the yes. little you know I mean we can light one up before we play our game okay okay you can have your little baby but your fun is because they're baby they're not too much okay Yeah. 
Um, so, yeah, so, you know, you come across cats. The porn, you know, people, people always want to bring up the porn shit. Like, you just be minding your own business and, you know. But it's interesting, though, <laughs> to p- other people. You've just lived it for 20 years, myself and Cliff. Like, I always like this. I don't know about you. So, with, like, friends, like, how we call them, quote, unquote, civilians, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, we'll be with people, and they'll be like, oh, my God, you know Alexis, Texas? And then they're like, yeah. They're like, I'm like, okay, you get two questions. <laughs> ask me whatever you want to ask in those two questions, and other than that, I don't want to hear it all night long. Because it's like, right. I'm, like, you don't want to go to work. Like, when you're not working, you don't want to talk about work. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So, it's like, you give them that, too, and then it's usually it's good. For you, again, it's always fascinating with the men is because, like, yeah, we, like, run the business, but they envy you guys more, I feel like, because you're fucking us. And so it's a different, like, you're, like, God to them. They're, like, but how do I do this? Or how, you know what I mean? So that's why I, like, for me, I minored in sociology in college, so I'm fascinated about, like, why people are are the way they are in their environment and what's your, like, what stimulates you or, like, why are you watching this kind of porn makes you A, B, C, or D. So that's what that aspect kind of fascinates me because and then for me, when people are comfortable and even, like, having guests here, like, once we have a conversation, people be asking me all kinds of crazy things, which I like because, again, communication. They Mm -hmm. may not know things and I'm like, oh, well, I'd rather teach you. So I say I'm Dr. Texas without the PhD and then we find out things here (laughs) at Truth with Texas. (laughs) Yeah. So we're going to play my favorite part. This is um, Truth with Texas. We've got four cards. We're going to go through each card, and each card is a different type of question. And we're going to get to know your naughtier side of Mm. Mr. Marcus. Mm. (coughs) All right, first card. I'm falling over. You're making me fall over. Yeah. Sorry, private talk. Promise. What is it? Ace of Diamonds. All right. It's a spicy question. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Most embarrassing thing that ever happened to you sexually? Where do I start? Um. This is bad, man, because this was so bad. I met this girl. She was in the club, and it was like in the end of the night. She comes walking up. And she's just wearing, she's bold. She's mm. wearing like this, like the, remember that Jennifer Lopez dress with the, yeah. the open in the, the middle? Green, the that yeah. green one? Mm-hmm. She had something like that, that around that time. Okay. And I got her, right? She was just like, you and me, let's go. I was like, yeah, let's go. So my boy had a swimming pool up, up in his house in the valley. We were down at the Beverly Center. Okay. So me and her, I'm like, cool, follow me to the valley. And I call my boy, I say, Yo, I need your, I need your pool right now because it's an indoor pool. And okay. He's there by himself. The vibes. Like, yeah, yeah. I was out looking for the vibes. So I get up there with her, and we're making out, and everything's going great. So we're swimming in the pool. I'm rock, rock hard. I mean, I'm like, I'm just floating in the pool doing shit, just fucking skinny <laughs> dipping with Mr. Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> just bobbing playing you know bobbing the dick up and down in the water so she knows what's up and uh um, so she knows what's up this is not playing time honey Mm-mm. and she was so bad she comes over to give me head right got out of the pool she comes over to give me head and i just she didn't even get close to it and i just started coming, coming everywhere and it wasn't like no little it was just did it go into her face and her hair? Was no, she, she pissed? Just kind of like, she just was like, what the fuck? And I was like, I don't know. I don't was know she that she, bad? Or was, was like, you she know what I mean? Bad. Like, she and was, so you, this came on her before you came know. in. Her, it, you know, whatever it was, she had such so strong. But she said she didn't even suck it yet. No, I know. She didn't even get the I've only really heard one other person happen this to, which is funny. One of my friends is not in the industry at all, but like familiar with the industry. But it's funny that that happened to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How yeah. early on was it in, in your porn career? In my porn career, it's probably. No, but I mean, like, at this time. Were you in porn at yeah, this time? Yeah. Okay. So how long had you been doing scenes at that time? Like, a lot? I've been, I've been, yeah, it was a few years. It so was, it was no reason for you no, to prematurely no, be nothing, ejaculating nothing, on this lady nothing, before now? <laughs> there was nothing. Did you at least get to this fuck was, her after? The, nah. Mm, was she not impressed because you, you came? You know, you know, the funny thing was. We, you know, she she ended up being a lawyer. She was going to law school, and now she was practicing business. 
law. And we hung out. Is she a lawyer? <laughs> I know. I know. She, <laughs> I got to track her down. Let me pull her back up. But I kind of like, I, that was humbling. It was so like, how did you recover? Because that's a big, <laughs> that's a big ego. Well, that's the thing. That, I know. I know. This just popped a hole in that motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 you know, you, the next time around when you're, you, you just make up for it. It's funny. Cause like now, like, cause I always think the flip side, right? This is the Gemini and me thinking I'm like, you know, like she's like, the, she's out there being like, you know, I had Mr. Marcus naked in the swimming pool and he just came before he even touched me, girl. Like he, he ain't even nothing. Like, <laughs> so I was like, there's one girl out there that can talk I know, about that. I know story. she knows. I know she knows. <laughs> She's like, oh, did it again. <laughs> did it again. Oh, that's funny. Okay, um, something you would not do sexually, something that's, like, completely on your never going to try, not happening. Um, I mean, I don't know. I'm pretty basic. You know? Basic. Yeah, I'm pretty basic. I, but does that mean a lot of things are off the table? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so <laughs> you're like, I more have, I'm only doing this list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't ever, I just try to make the sexual energy, you know, Okay. count, concentrated. What's the longest you've gone without sex? Mm, maybe a month. Longest you've ever not jerked off? August has always been that month for some reason, too. Is August hard times? I don't know what it is. <laughs> it's something about the weather. <laughs> it's something, maybe. August is a bad month for me, too. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I mean, it is a bad month for me. I got married in this month, somewhere around this date, somewhere. I blocked that out of my okay, head, but some, so, somewhere right, in August, right. it's usually toward the end where somewhere. I don't remember exactly, right, but right. around that time, I'm right. always like, what's wrong? I'm like, oh, it's this month, it's again. Right, right. So, yeah, maybe that's, I'm, I'm coasting through it. I'll get through it. I'll be fine. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. Example of your dirty talk. What's something that you do, like, you have, like, a go-to phrase? Like, you've been being Mr. Marcus for a long time. Like, you be smoothing girls' ears. Mm -hmm. You be telling, what should you be telling them, Marcus? <laughs> right. Always, it's always about that ass. I don't know what it is. I'd be like, let me see that ass. Let me see that Turn ass, bro. Turn that shit over. Okay. Let me smack that shit. Okay. You know what? I will fuck the shit out of you. Oh, you hear that, Patreon. You better <laughs> listen up. This is getting dirty over here. <laughs> I love it. Dated somebody older. How old, much older? Uh, I think, that, well, shit, I was attracting older women at okay. an early age, yeah. For some fucking reason. My mother used to have a, she had a problem with it. Because <laughs> it'd be like grown women. They like her friends? <laughs> they'd be like the same age? <laughs> You're fucking all your mom's friends, Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever fucked one of your friend's moms? One of my mom's friends? No, well, one of your friend's moms. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, well, like, how you say it so, like, duh, bitch, do you know who I am? <laughs> okay, so it happened multiple occasions, it sounds like. Yeah, <laughs> okay, um, have you ever fallen asleep during sex? Nah, usually after. After? You never yeah. gave fallen asleep during a blowjob? Nah. No, nope, I'm not wide your thing. awake. Wide <laughs> awake. All right. Next category. Let's see if I don't fall over this time. Here we go. Ace of spades. It's a naughty question. No, this is uh, oh. ace of. Uh, oh, clubs. I'm old. Yeah. Kinky. There we go. Kinky. All right. Ace of clubs. A kinky question. Quickest, nope, I already know that one. I was going to say quickest <laughs> orgasm, but we already figured that one yeah, out, guys. Um, shower sex or car sex? Uh, car sex. For some reason, I'm really good at that. Thong or booty shorts? Booty shorts. Called somebody the wrong name during sex? I couldn't remember their name, so I didn't say anything. Did you say baby, I honey? I was like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> He said I said, mm, mm, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any fetishes besides big booties? Nice lips. Nice lips. Mm -hmm. But nothing like feet, you're not into I bondage. Mean, I like, I like Are eyes. you into I like, like foreplay? I, like I mean, not foreplay, like dressing up, like anything oh, like. Uh, I mean, 
like Booties freaky booties? fetish stuff, okay, not like okay. simple fetish yeah, stuff. You know, yeah, act yeah, like yeah. a porn star, Marcus. Just okay, sorry. <laughs> I know. That's what I Don't act like you're I not Mr. Gray. You leave like training bitches up over there. What's what are you? I like you know. I do like a little restraint. Uh, okay. Rope, uh, a rope play. You know, there was, okay. there was I was on a. Did you ever work like for, that for Kink? While. That whole mm -hmm. like bond, those kind of bondage things. Like yeah, that you know, stuff scares me. You know, it's it's funny because when someone else comes up with these scenarios, yeah, then you gotta. You got to make sexy. it your own. I think if you come up with it, then you know it's more I mean? control then, of like, yeah, then you're I more feel that. into it. Right. For me, it was more I had to figure out why, because I don't associate like why that was sexy to people. But it was like, I don't associate pain and pleasure, mm. but I could see why people do. It's just not my thing, per se. Right. Nah, I mean, the pain, I don't know. I don't know. You try to you try to. There's a fine line. You know, you want to. Yeah, you want to get where it is a pleasurable thing. Like when yeah. I smack ass, I like to think of myself as a good, as, as a really good ass smacker. You don't I, leave marks? Because I, I be having some people that get too fucking, and I'm like, oh, listen, I have to shoot things, and you really fuck my shit up, you're never fucking me again. So, because people be like, they smack you down. I'm like, no, let me give you a tutorial before we do this. Like, we need to go up. We can't, you know, that sounds better, looks better. It's great for everybody. Yeah, there's a, there, you have to do a certain. There's a finesse. Yeah. And there's you gotta a hit it just right. There's a, a booty smacking tutorial from we had King Hep on our show and he does right. a, the whole um oh, yeah. test or uh, seminar about the booty smacking thing. He went viral just recently on <laughs> about it. I was like, see? So yeah. it's all an art. It's an it art. It is. And women lined up. But for sex that. is art, I think. And that's why when you do it the right way, women just wanna have be, feel safe. They wanna feel like you know what you're doing, you're in control. Like some people are trying to choke you, you're like, you're gonna make me die. Like this doesn't feel good. You know what I mean? Like it has right. to be like know what you're doing and I you think have to yeah you, you have to there's a, a, a you know the, the word chemistry comes up but it, there's something there, there's a you know there's a thing there's an energy there's a it's synergy. like a flow of like feeling like you don't have to have like a whole like it's a connection of like even the eyes or like if somebody's body moves of like because that to me again is the safety of knowing that you know what makes me is a good feeling and what's a turning off and like a bad feeling to know your limits right of what that is and that's why that kind of stuff bonded is more like really trusting are you like a boundary do you like your boundaries crossed are you open to absolutely like not i don't know like for me i don't like i don't have a partner that i'm like currently like sexual with like in that aspect where it's like repetitive where i would feel comfortable but for me Same. i feel like once i have a partner that i'm like sexually active with on a, like a normal basis i would be willing to if it was brought up the right way like i'm not like I don't like to be like, hey, I don't want you to do this and then for you to do it. No, but I like to know that my limit, like I don't really have limits. I'll try something unless I don't like it and I'll tell you I don't like it right, kind of thing. Right, right. Right, um, right, 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 like there's, you know what I mean? Like for me, it's like, cause some things I don't know and I used to be very like, oh, I don't like it, but I never tried it. But I'm like, you know what I mean? So I feel like with the right person, if you could make me do those things or open to what that is, right. I'm open to suggestion. Yeah, I'll try right, anything right. once. And I'm like, look, listen, we tried that one time and it just didn't work out for right, me. Right, like right, let's right. never go there again. <laughs> so right, right, we right. tried it. Right. <laughs> most number of times you've had sex during a day. The most shit. Well, two times, one. Off camera and on camera. Uh -huh. On camera, it was like 33. People or times? What does that mean? Oh, Hold on. People. Okay. And then All right. We'll people. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So 33 okay. People okay. Most. 33 people. We like that. But, okay. But 33 most times people. was I remember it was like we was watching a Super Bowl game, me and this girl, and we must have fucked like five, four to five times. But within like the game, solid, good, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> like every time was like, oh, uh. it wasn't like, you know, it, it wasn't like a five, ten minute, like nah, quick. It was like, it was like, it was you were good. fucking. It was, it was fucking the whole. And I remember because we used, she used to send me messages every Super Bowl and be like, hey, remember? I'm like, yeah. Do you remember who won the Super Bowl that year? Uh, <laughs> 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 Must have been a great game. <laughs> Do you say so. Favorite time of day to have sex? I'm a morning guy. Morning? Yeah. Okay. I, you know, I, I, if I can, but, you know, I think you get more creative at night. Yeah. I think you got, because your days went, and you've had, you, maybe you're looking forward to it. Maybe you're, like, trying to relax. Maybe you're coming that tail end. Situational. Yeah. Yeah. I, I To me, at, at night, it's like, mm, now it's, but at morning, it's just like, it's like, if, I don't drink coffee, but if I did. That's your coffee? Yeah, that'd be my coffee. Waking up to pussy every morning? Yeah. <laughs> By Mr. Marcus. <laughs> All right, next card. 
ace of, I can't see the microphone, oh, hearts. He's got an ace of hearts, romantic. <sighs> Have you ever slid into somebody's DMs, a celebrity? Or oh. even a fan, or like, you know? Mm, you know, I, you know, she'd probably kill me if I say this, but uh, Melissa Ford okay. right, did a little podcast, and we clicked. Like, I thought we were cool, but I felt like she, she ghosted was, you? Huh? <laughs> did she well, ghost I think you? she was kind of like, I can't. <laughs> mm, <laughs> She's like, you're too much. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. can't. Because we talk, we talk, we'd sit on the phone and we'd talk about shit, talk about music. But so you slid in her DMs. Yeah, well, we ended up doing a podcast together, and then we okay. just kind of we just from there it grew into. Yeah, she's a very strong, opinionated black woman who kind of knows what she wants, what mm-hmm. she don't want. Sexy. So, yeah. 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 So I was respected, respected, respectively ghosted. <laughs> Dinner date or movie date? I'm a movie guy. A movie guy? Yeah, I'm a movie guy. Making out or cuddling? I like making out. Like real good making out. Making out? Mm. Mm, giving or receiving? I love receiving. <laughs> the smile on his face says it all, private talk. <laughs> Naked or lingerie? Uh, that's a tough one. I actually like... Oof, that's a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> I like them both. You like them both. I like them both. Favorite place to be kissed? Uh, ooh, I like my, I like my neck. I, was I wanted say to my, say I your say my, dick. I, I, I was, was like, gonna, are you? <laughs> I was gonna say, but I was like, I like that sucked. Okay. I don't like a kiss. I like that sucked. So. No, no little kiss for you. You want the whole mouth? I want the whole <laughs> thing. Okay. Go ahead. So your neck. Yeah. Okay. If you needed to have a safe word, what would your safe word be? <laughs> chill. Chill. <laughs> chill. <laughs> that's, that's your safe <laughs> word? That's pretty much. Chill. That's all I got, man. <laughs> oh, okay, last question. Deal breakers. Mm. What are deal breakers in a relationship for you? I don't know. I <laughs> You're like nothing. Fuck it. Yeah, cause you have to have some kind of boundaries. What are deal breakers? Right, right. I, you know, I like positive energy. I like positive. I like funny people. So if you ain't funny, you know. So you gotta be at least entertaining to you to like. Hold you gotta get it. You gotta crack. You gotta crack jokes. Even okay. If, even if they're not. Good sense know. of humor. Since you so the deal breaker would be the opposite. Of so if they're really lame, have no personality, not for you. Yeah, I, I. Most people have a sense of humor. It just matters if if you. Do you always it. feel like you're the funniest one? Nah. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, last card. Ace of spades is naughty questions, which is our favorite here at Private Talk After Dark. Have you ever faked an orgasm? <laughs> why do you say it like that like okay why did you fake an orgasm because i you know i really just i knew this was a thing of like i asked this probably the last this season i didn't know this was a thing until like six months ago that men fake orgasm right what, 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 so why is he, why were you fake orgasm over right, there right why would you act like because you know if you come if you're like you know if you're fucking and maybe you come too soon okay and you're like well you know count down until you know she realizes it's yeah <laughs> so you kind of like you have got to work up but to why something. did you fake come did you just not were you not into it were you just not you were too fucked and you were not going to be able to come like these are the excuses i've heard from the men that have been well, on this couch i've heard <laughs> what, David, what, what, I know. For all the excuses the men have that I've asked on the couch, because I asked this question to a lot of my guests, because okay. I didn't know that men do this, but they're like, oh yeah, it was, these are so these were some of the excuses, but and then what there were some of was uh, it was like they they weren't into it anymore. Mm-hmm. One girl smelled, one mm-hmm. girl. Um, I was always like something like, and I was just like, why would you keep going? Just why did you have why to you? say that you that you came? And they're like, because I didn't want to hurt her feelings. 
But that, but you'd rather let her leave whatever disheveled way she was before. And then like, right. Communication. Could, right, right. You, 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 You're going to fuck somebody, yeah, right. but you can't say, like, you can't be like, hey. Because you just said feeling. So, because she's, she's feeling, she's opening up. She's giving you, like, she's saying, hey. Yeah, but don't you want to be honest? Like, and no one's, and again, for me, it's about the, it's not what, it's, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. No one's telling me like, hey, bitch, like, what's going right. on? You know what right. I mean? But if something was to a situation where you had to fake come, didn't like what you're fucking, why are we fucking? Why are you still, right. why, are we still? <laughs> why are you in that vagina, sir? <laughs> <Why are> you... <laughs> All right, let me, so how do you take it? I've never had it happen to me. Okay. Well, afterwards, it was because my friend who told me this, he was like, I bet you're thinking about all the people if they fake came or not. I'm like, yeah, because I don't right. know. I'm right. like, because I didn't think right. this was a thing. So right. okay. who knows? Why do you fake? Have you? Okay, first of all, let's start. Have you faked it before? Have I faked it? Yeah. Of course. Okay, now why? Because, because I wanted to get it over with. I was tired. I was like, you know, I wanted it, but then I came already and I was over it. I was just like, get, you know, it sucks, let's go. Right? You know? Because if you're aware of that, it changes everything. Yeah, like but that. that doesn't mean that I didn't come at one point. In each okay. session, I'm going to come. I mean, there's times that I haven't, but I know my body well enough that right. I'm going to use your dick to come. Like, it's right, just right, happening. Right, like, right, right. sorry if you don't know what's happening, but <laughs> I'm going to make it happen today. <laughs> Cause you don't know sometimes. Sometimes a girl don't say shit. She just. But being, but being, well, but you can feel if she's wet. I mean. But I guess could, every vagina is different. Just like I mean. Yeah, some girls you know. are vocal about it. Some, and maybe. And yeah, so, but being vocal sometimes could be where the lie. Cause like, how, right. how do you know? Like I'm vocal as fuck, but I'm also really wet. That yeah. so it's like. Yeah, you surprise. Know. I mean, but it, 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 yeah, you really. Chemistry. You come I mean, easily, or is it? Um, I wouldn't say like immediately. It depends on how long I haven't had sex or how long I've been masturbating. How long like a, a lot of these seem like to be. Um, do you tell him, Let's do this. My Hitachi it? sleeps next to my bed, and he knows exactly what position I like, and we fall asleep great. <laughs> <laughs> Call it the day. Like um, no, it's situational. I think it's certain. Po every position, I know what what it takes to make me get off. I think uh, I can come the easiest in missionary, um, because I'm very clitoral stimulated. So I like to play with myself and being uh, stimulated at the, or like fucked at the same time. Like did that. You, that you double. Like at an early age. Is that something that I was? And nobody ever taught us. Like, hey girls, let's go on the playground and talk <laughs> about it. No, that never happened to me. I. It was that was also a thing. Like I was always. I was a late bloomer, so I didn't get like I didn't get boobs. I didn't like get my period. I didn't do any of those things to like become quote unquote like a woman to like those who oh, are right, right, until right. like sixteen or like something like seventeen, like sixteen probably. Okay. Um, okay. So, but at that time, like not a lot of like uh, like my friend, like nobody was talking about any of that stuff, especially like sex, like what that was. Like no one was doing. I mean, we were pretty sheltered out in Texas. I don't, I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't one of those people, like, I don't think I even hooked up with a guy until I was, like, I was, that'd be my junior year. Okay, junior maybe. high school. Yeah, junior but high school. But you were getting hit on, people flirting with you. Yeah, but it's different, it's, like, juvenile, like, you know, like, I always had a boyfriend, I always was, like, chasing boys, I was always boy crazy. I mean, I think I've always, yeah, I've always been boy crazy. Still boy crazy. So. I am I am man crazy. <laughs> no, I'm not. For me, is um, I'm in a space in my life where I'm dating and I've, I've done a lot of like work myself. So I'm like kind of I'm practice dating what I say. So I'm practice dating until I find someone until I don't need to practice date anymore. But so I'm just um, but you know, dating is never of it that way, very um, difficult for being people like ourselves in the industry. You can't really go on dating apps. You can't really you know do it the the new conventional way and i'm very kind of old school anyways I like the like meeting people you know in person which now the world's opening up so it's kind of back in a little bit like right, that right. um but yeah i've um i'm enjoying it i mean it's not it's scarce out there these days but my my future husband will come around the corner yeah. one, someday very soon yeah no you, you'll be fine yeah. oh for sure for me i'm not in a rush i was married before for me i know what I want and don't want. I think uh, the last like year of my life was really again like the personal growth of really listing and knowing what like the boundaries of what I want from a partner mm. moving forward and mm. like what that means for me in this space in my life. 
Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's, you know, especially after everything you kind of been around, seen, experienced, you just, it's different. You know, sometimes, like you said, you know, you're a porn star, I don't ever, if I get into a sexual mindset, yeah, it goes pretty deep. Yeah. You know, and it kind of, I want to experience that. It's that can, I can attract, but then are there, is there, is there a relationship in there? Is it at this time, do I want to explore or am I, am I trying to like just focus on one? You know, it's just. I don't think necessarily you <laughs> should have to focus on just one and not the other. I think you got to find the center and that being you and what works for you and what, you know, what that free flowing state is and what makes you happy. At the end of the day, it's like what, like you knowing who you are, your worth, what you bring to the table and all those things. Right. And like, for me, like I like meditation helped a lot about getting like really centered and like, you know, kind of like clearing out the bullshit. My mind, you know, being a business person, you know, minded, they're just always go, 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 go. But really kind of having a calming state and like a safe space to like experience that. I learned a lot um, to just kind of be at peace. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I, as, as you were talking, I was thinking, you know, because when you when you to add, when you find somebody not like just you and them it's you and your family mm -hmm. it's you and your friends yeah you know what i mean and you want someone who comes in there and is accepted by them as well for you know sure what i mean because that's you know and that's you know and that's what i realized like that's where you that investment that time is spent doing mm -hmm. developing these relationships that are like for sure i think yeah. probably you because of like how who you are and like my thing a lot of it was just being selfish in before and now it's like a different like you see the a different perspective and you're like oh there is somebody else in the relationship too and it has to work both sides you know yeah. what i mean and not just for one and not the other yeah. it's not just a you know just works for me all relationships are work you know what i mean yeah. i feel like as long as people are trying to put in the time to really hold the space for each other and themselves and their relationship i mean i think they could you could really go a lot further but yeah. some people aren't there yet and some people may never be there but i mean well you know everybody gets there in their own time mm. frame you know for sure you know we do have this kind of conversation because cats can probably be tripping trying to figure that out and then you come along and you say hey everybody gets there at their own time you don't feel the pressure you know, and it, you don't, I told somebody the other day, this guy stopped me at Costco. He was like, are you single? And I was like, I got this, I got somebody, you know. Mm -hmm. But he was like, because I've been single for like eight months. I've been on the dating apps. He was there with his son. He says, I don't, I just don't want to be with anybody. And I'm sitting there like, well. Don't. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, well, it, I, it, I mean, you coming to me for that advice? Yeah. The only thing I could tell him was, you know, don't look. Because when you, you're looking, you'll never really find it especially when somebody to but when you just kind of just live it'll come to you yeah it'll find you. but i think that's also i agree with that, that i think in a, in a i don't think it's fairy tale i think it's it's realistic and it's um it's based off perspective but it's a fine line of like for myself of like putting yourself out there without putting your you know like in a sense putting yourself like i'm not searching like oh my god i need to but i also knew i need to no one's coming in my door like i gotta right. put myself out there in places right. and not that i'm like certain you know never but being open to right. finding that where it's like that's that gray area of like having both you know you have to really like being open to it where before i thought i was but i really didn't know what i wanted and needed from a relationship because mm -hmm. i needed to know what i needed for myself first right yeah. that's why i have a sign in front of the door it says love yourself first if you can't love yourself first you can't love anybody else really yeah, i just read that correctly that. just seen that yeah it's on my door when you walk in and out of the yeah. door <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for coming i appreciate you so much what do you where can we find you where can we support you we can do all those things you know all you say you have your only fans you um yeah. you, know, you do your own content because there are, you know we've been around a long time because there are time you know, we've been around so long that these things never happen like this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Some people would say, you know, how can we find you? And they're like, okay, you can catch me on. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> I remember motherfuckers didn't do that. They were like, uh, you can get my number after, <laughs> you know. Don't be giving email. these people your number, Marcus. No, you no, really no. have a lot of late night calls. You better charge those people on your only but OnlyFans calls. <laughs> you. you know, I do get a lot of weird shit, but I can't. I handle, man, I handle all of it. I handle it. I love it actually. I don't mind it. So, what mind. is your social media? Is it just Mr. Marcus? AKA Mr. Marcus. Okay. 
So hey. that's where we can find you. Yeah. That's where we can support you. Okay. Yeah. And you, but you're more of an Instagram man. So is it still the same handle or? Uh, yeah, it's AKA Mr. Marcus. You can go to MrMarcus.com. Okay. And all those things just lead back to the social media. Okay. Uh, OnlyFans is AKA Mr. Marcus. Uh, I, you know, I tried to get Mr. Marcus and other motherfuckers had Mr. Marcus. And, those, and they just squat on that shit. Yeah. They don't even post shit. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, if you're trademarked, you can uh, give them a thing and they can they should be able to take it down if they are just squatting on it. Okay. If you, like, contact them about yeah, that. But, yeah, because I mean, you've obviously been Mr. Marcus for 20 years. and But, yeah. Yeah. You can look into yeah, that. It's happening. Is there anything that you want to ask Miss Texas before you get off the private talk couch? Um... What do you, I mean, what do you get asked the most? What do I get asked the most? Yeah. Mm, people, wow. people always, they always say, did you ever work with her? And I say, nah, you know? Yeah. You know? No, we did not work together. No. But you didn't, and then it would always be always Dutch to the brothers. And then you, yeah, yeah. You, no, I never did in racial. Right. It was a big topic of like, oh, is she racist? Well, why, is why, she this? Why, is she why, that? Is, that? is she this? Why didn't I do it in racial? Yeah. No, uh, what, or what? Yeah, why, well, too, why do you think it's such a big <clears throat> Deal. Why do I think it's such a big deal? Right. I think for everyone else, it's a big deal. You for know them, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. that's why for me, it was very like, I don't know why I make people or why does it matter what my vagina does? I don't think right. that's based on right. like what, um, who I like and what that means. Like, I feel like people took it and ran with it. I think that it's just because I didn't do it. People want to have a, you know, there's platforms or like, um, what is it called? those forums that are dedicated to like why I meant to do it and when I do this and that, there that is. it was just, yeah, like, and that's for me is I never really like looked uh, into the negative because it was always negative that I was like, let me just be. When I want to do it, I'll do it. There's no racist anything about that, you know what I mean? And it be, the business became very different, um, you know, so it was very pinned against things and that has nothing to do with me, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's for me, it was like, I've, I love everybody. It's not about yeah. a race thing. It's, it's never yeah. about any of those things. Yeah. And like people who know me, like we've been friends, you know, obviously clearly you know that about me, but people, it's always uh, the first thing people ask, you know, everybody, like my friends. but. For me, it's like really? I have nothing, you know, to you know, hide about anything. It wasn't about that. It's just how the game was was different back then, you know. And then when I got contracted, you know, I didn't have to do anything like that. I got out of the business after that. I was in a relationship. Someone didn't want me to be in the business anymore. And I kind of just did my own thing. And then, mm. you know. Well, you know, this, this business, you know, obviously race is a, a, a huge part of it. Sexually, it's a taboo thing. It's yeah. Like, fetish thing it's a well i think because like again the texas thing. thing you know people think my parents are like racist people which is not the truth crazy, yeah, my dad's stories, puerto rican yeah. my mom's german norwegian like you know there's so many things again the cliche of what people think and assume and take something and run with it which i've never said i've never been that i've right. never acted in that character that's not who it, my character is you know because people would ask me and i never i you know i like i i've seen you know being a black dude in this business yeah uh you know, especially in that era, mm -hmm. you know, you know, people, they would just set things up in such a racial way. Exactly. You know, and, you know, and this was don't, and, I and it just said, felt wrong. You know what I mean? I felt like everything was just separate. Things were very just different. I think that it was just like, it made it like, why does it have to be that way? You know what I mean? And I think from the business side is why they made it so sever, like segregated. So the more they were trying to get you to, to do it, the more you were like, no. No one ever got, or even asked me really to do it. It was only one conversation ever. And then like literally I got out of the business after that. And it was, in the beginning, my agent, we just, you, that was. Yeah, they probably in, offered you a lot In the money, beginning, right? it was like, you wait to do that. You wait to, you know, like right. the, 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 the levels shit. of like, you right, know what I mean? Right. And then it's like, by that right. time I had been in, in right. the business for a long time. Like you don't know better. You, that's who I got in the business with. I think that's who my business in a sense, partner is, you know what I mean? Because he works for me, you right, know? Right. Um, and I don't right. know, I was 21 years old in the business, so I didn't see an issue with it. I think the, as the years progressed and how the world evolved outside, it became more of a thing in the, you know, for everybody else, but we were in our, in our own little bubble here, so it's like, I'm like, really, you think that about me? Like, just because I didn't do a scene, like, I don't know, I, 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 sometimes it's upsetting. Because I, I know you, you <clears throat> are like love, Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And men, and you're not discriminate to, you like black men. Actually. For sure, I've dated several, you know, yeah. but again, like, yeah. I don't I don't advertise my personal business, you know, because I'm a private person. I give so much of myself in sex scenes that I'm like, I need right. some personal time for, you know, just for myself. So, right. Right. you know, you keep those things yourself, but I don't hide it. I'm out and doing things, whatever. But right. sometimes, again, it's, 
why like I ask people to ask me conversation or questions too is because it's like some people want to know things that some people want to ask me and some people don't. So I, I tell people, you know, it's their preference, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's their body. And I always tell girls when they came into business, don't nobody, you don't, don't do anything you don't want to do. Mm-hmm. You, you don't have to do anything they tell you to do. It's exactly. your body. For sure. You know? <clears throat> uh, so I'd always just reiterate that. So I, I totally understood, I, you know, it's yeah. your body. Shit, you do whatever the fuck you want to do. For sure. And that's, I think, too, back in the day, it was very, like, they'd be like, oh, well, you're going to do everything anyways. You're going to sell out. You're going to do this. And, like, just the words are in the time of two were triggering that I'm like, why does I have to I mean know, any of those I things? So, I'm know, like, that's like the whole thing where it's like, like I'm human too. I'm right. like, you know what I mean? I'm like, that has nothing some to some do, other, you know, right, like some motherfuckers will fuck it up because like you might be down and then somebody comes along. And yeah. You know, you just off. don't, you know, again, the, the communication, you know, back then it's like, who do you go to? Who do you ask? You right. know, we're all being told really the same right. type of thing. So, right. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Real quick, funny story, shooting the world's luckiest. They wanted me to work with 101 girls, so they were like, "Black dude, okay. you're gonna find 101 black girls." Okay. That's, that's that was the mentality going okay. into that shit, and uh, there, it's not a, there was never 101 black that, girls that's yeah. at that time. So I did, we did 33. First day was all black girls, and so they're like, "Well, how are we gonna get for the other 60, uh, 67, uh, 64?" Uh, was it 67? Right. No, 68. I use a calculator still. I don't know. <laughs> 101, sorry. <laughs> so, so uh, it was like 68. And so they were like, well, let's ask the white girls. I remember this. It was like a big deal. And uh, so they just like, hey, uh, you got to shoot this with Mr. Marcus, black dude, 101 girls. We need 68 more girls. Uh, is, your, is your available are you available and it was like yeah sure and i think that they were kind of blown away because they didn't they didn't i remember the production man was just kind of like i remember said you're gonna have to ask i remember them telling me we're gonna have to go ask (laughs) (laughs) the other girls that they could work with other girls well the other well then you couldn't yeah 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 yeah. it was 101 i mean all of that is really a question that they see because it's to get that many girls in one place anyways is very difficult. Yeah. But then just to the numbers. Yeah. It's I mean, what do you, you know, it, it would, you know, now in this day and age, it wouldn't be an issue if you had 101 <clears throat> mixed girls. But for sure. But but, then, but that, that's what I'm saying. Like that was business wise. No one who who makes right. those rules. I didn't implement any of these things like right. you just, you know, what right. I mean, it's a systematically right. thing, whatever, where it's like you don't know intent like when you until you start like doing your own content or knowing like right. begin even just longevity in the business knowing like oh i can say that right. i don't have to do you know what right. i mean and, and it's unfortunate but that's again again i think the communication and having community spaces where you, you know you're allowed and should be have a safe space to talk about rates and comfortabilities like you know right. hard you know topics and things like that yeah. so we can be more aware right. but i appreciate you thank you so much for coming on the couch i appreciate it i hope pre- I hope that Private Talk After Dark has had a a fun time with me and Mr. Marcus. I hope you've got all the fun things that you desired. And um, until we meet again. This episode is sponsored by Bet Online.